afternoon. So if I write on the board, can you see? For example, if I write, say, econometrics, can you see this? Can you read this? Okay, welcome back. So uh, I will start with the financial econometrics, tools in financial econometrics, okay. Actually this is econometrics, but the only thing is we are applying this to the financial data, right. Before that I shall just uh, introduce certain statistical concepts. In, can you hear, hear me there? Okay. In statistics, you are familiar with uh, a population and a sample, right? Okay. The population in time series econometrics is called data, sorry. Data generating process. Data generating process or DGP. Okay. This is our population. And then we have sample. In time series econometric sample is called ensemble. So instead of population, we say DGP, that is the data generating process. But the sample, we, we use sample, in, sometimes the weight ensemble also is used, okay. In general, maybe I will be referring to population and sample, you are, you are already familiar with this. Then in statistics, we are, you are also familiar with the, what is called parameter parameter and estimate, okay, parameter and estimate. Parameter refers to the population, there is some problem, oh, this is you don't know if it is a movie. Okay. So parameter refers to population. Parameter is any measure which is a function of the population values population, so parameter and uh, we, we usually, we know in statistics we have mean, then standard deviation, variance and so on, right. <coughs> then for the population mean we use say mu, right, and population standard deviation we use the Greek term sigma, this mu sigma then rho, rho is the correlation coefficient, population correlation coefficient. These are, uh, these are other parameters because they refer to the population measures. Then the est sample estimate of these population parameters are usually denoted with a hat over the parameter. This is a parameter mu, that is the population mean. The estimate of this we represent by putting a hat over the parameter, mu hat, 
we say mu hat. Similarly, we can have sigma hat, rho hat. These are all sample estimates. But in statistics, we also know that corresponding to the population mean, we have a sample mean. That sample mean we usually write as x bar. You know that, right? And uh, corresponding to the population standard deviation, we have a small s, okay? In addition to this x bar, yes, then for the correlation quotient, which one we are using? Yeah, r. We are using r. Sample correlation coefficient between two variables. In addition to these terms, we can also use the hat denotations, okay? This also we can use for the estimate. Now, we have a difference between estimate and the estimator. Estimate and the estimator. Usually, these two are used interchangeably. That is, we take them denoting the same thing, even though there is a difference. Let us take the case of x bar, okay? When we say x bar is equal to 4, this is an estimate. But how do we get this 4? We are using a formula, right? What is the formula for x bar? What we do is, we sum all the values and divide by number of items. That is, we sum all the values and divide by the number of items. This formula is the estimator. Okay, formula is the estimator. Sometimes, when we mean estimator, we may say estimate. Okay, also. So, estimate and estimator sometimes we will use interchangeably. But according to the context, you have to find out, you have to see whether we are referring to the estimator, that is the formula or the value, that is 4. Okay. Now, in statistics, usually what you have studied can be divided into two. That one is the descriptive statistics, where we are, teach, where we are learning the, the summary statistics. That is mean, median, mode and all, all other cases. Okay? Then we have what is called inferential statistics. <coughs> inferential statistics. This inferential statistics is divided between estimation and the hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing. <coughs> I am not going into the details of all these. You have already studied this. I will take the first one, estimation. We have already differentiated between estimate and estimator. Now, there are usually three methods of estimation in statistics. The three methods are least squares, method of moments, then maximum likelihood method. Maximum likelihood method. Least squares method you are already familiar with. You have done regressions, right? So, in regression we are using the least squares method. Or more properly, this is the ordinary least squares method. So, ordinary least squares method. We say OLS, 
for old least squares method. This is also called the classical least squares method. Classical least squares method. Okay. Usually, this is the it is the ordinary least squares method that we are starting with. Method of moments usually is the least difficult or the simplest method of estimation, method of moments. In terms of difficulty in estimation, maximum likelihood method comes first, that is the most difficult method. Earlier, when supercomputers were not available, it was very difficult to estimate using the maximum likelihood method. Still, people were using that method, maximum likelihood method. Method of moments is the simplest method. Least squares, classical least squares method comes between these two. Okay. Now we have the supercomputers, so the maximum likelihood method we will get, within seconds we will get the estimate. With all these methods we will get that. Now there is another method also that is the generalized method of moments. GMM, generalized method of moments. That is said to be the most difficult method of estimation, generalized method of moments. But with the supercomputers, estimation is not at all a problem. But for understanding this is a, this is a little difficult. It's highly mathematical. So even though method of moments is the simplest method, generalized method of moments is the most difficult one. Now I will start with the ordinary least squares method. You are already familiar with this. Okay, before that, in time series econometrics, we have two approaches. One is a univariate approach. Univariate approach. We are considering only one variable at a time. Then we have multivariate approach. Multivariate approach. When we consider only one variable, only one variable, then the method that we use in financial econometrics or in general econometrics is what is called ARIMA. ARIMA is the autoregressive, I refers to integrated, MA refers to moving average. Integrated autoregressive moving average process. We will study this, okay? So here we are considering only one variable, okay, only one variable. In multivariate analysis, we have the, the ordinary least squares method. That is, we are using more than one variable, one dependent variable and another independent variable separately. So we have the OLS and other cases, okay. And in multivariate analysis of the time series approach, we have also what is called cointegration. We will consider cointegration. And this cointegration is done in the framework of what is called VAR, vector autoregression. Vector autoregression. Then we have what is called VECM, vector error correction model. Vector error correction model. Okay. This VECM also is associated with the co-integration, VAR and the VECM. Actually, we can have a multivariate approach to ARIMA also. That is, we can include another independent variable, another explanatory variable, another exogenous variable in ARIMA. In that case, what we are getting is, it's called in different terms. Arimas or multivariate arima or vector arima. We are already familiar with var. That is, I have already told you about var. So here we have vector arima. 
and all these in general is known as transfer function. Transfer function. But somehow I don't know, this transfer function approach is not much popular even though Arima method is much, much more popular than anything else. Because it has been found that uh, any projection, any forecast from the ARIMA modeling is the best performing method compared with uh, any other macroeconometric modeling. ARIMA modeling using only one variable. That will give the best performing forecast. And that is why ARIMA has become so popular. Now, before coming to this ARIMA modeling and uh, time series econometrics in general, I will start with the uh, OLS, ordinary least squares method, because you are already familiar with that, or I expect that you are already familiar with that, OLS. Suppose we are considering a simple regression, simple regression of a dependent variable on one independent variable. Dependent variable we write y. I am writing the a, y t, where t is the time subscript, we are, because we are using the time series. y t is equal to alpha plus beta x t plus u t. x t is the independent explanatory variable and u t, you know, what is u t? u t is the error, usual error time, okay? Now in, this is this equation is a population reference. So this is called a population relationship. That is the pop relationship between two population variables yt and xt along with ut. So this is the population one. In that case, alpha and beta are the population parameters. Here the parameters are alpha and beta, population parameters. We have to estimate the parameters, alpha and beta. So how do we represent the estimates? Putting a hat over the parameter, that is alpha hat and beta hat. For getting alpha hat and beta hat, that is the estimates of alpha and beta, we use the ordinary least squares method. I'm not going into the details of how we do that, but that estimation is depending upon certain assumptions regarding the UT, error t. You're familiar with those assumptions, and those assumptions are very important. That is why I'm starting with this. What are those assumptions regarding the error t? Anybody? Now remember, when we characterize any variable, the statistical character characteristics of any variable are given in terms of the moments. We have the first moment. The first moment is first row moment, okay? Row moment is our mean. First row moment is the mean. Then we have the second central moment. What is the second central moment? Variance. And the square root of variance is standard deviation. Okay? Standard deviation. Now the third central moment is uh, used for measuring skewness. And the fourth central moment is used for measuring kurtosis. Okay? Now these two are very important, the first two, first two moments, that is mean and variance. So whenever we, find, whenever we analyze the characteristics of a variable, we have to see the mean and variance. Along with the variance, we have another measure also. That measure is covariance. What is covariance? Covariance is given in terms of 
the okay how do we get the variance how do we get the variance ah sigma square and how do we get the sigma square root of variance right <laughs> ah suppose we have a variable x okay we want to find out the variance of x now again remember we have two cases this x may refer to a deterministic variable a sample variable that is we know the value of that another this x may refer to the population value if we refer, refer x as the population value then x is a random variable okay this yt alpha beta xt and ut are all population values population values okay this therefore this yt is a random variable this yt is a random variable because ut is a random variable yt is given in terms of ut therefore this yt is a random variable now usually we consider when we consider a population variable it is a random variable so this variance of x we can write in terms in two ways one referring to the actual formula that we know about the sample what is the actual one that is we take the sum of the deviations okay xt minus x bar the whole square divided by okay n that is the number of time periods this is how we are finding the variance of x we take the deviations from the mean then square it then sum it take the average that is the variance if we take the square root of this we get the standard deviation now this is when we know all these xt values and we know x bar but when it comes to the population variable we do not know about the value of xt or x bar we have we know the value but with a probability only that is the case with the population variables so in that case vari variable of variance of x we will represent in terms of what is called the expectation we say either expectation value or expected value that is the value that we expect to be the value of the population that is why it is called the expectation and we use a term like e for the expectation this e represents this summation and this n everything remains the same so this we can rewrite as variance of x is equal to our xt we can write simply x or xt minus what is this x bar x bar is the sample mean we cannot use sample mean along with the population right so we have to write ah uh, what is our mu right then the whole square expectation of xt minus mu the whole square what it this is the variance for the population now if we compare this and this this e stands for what instead of this sigma and this n sigma by n good idea otherwise everything is the same we are finding the expectation of the square deviations expectation of the square deviation is nothing but in terms of the sample value mean of the square deviations got it so the expectation is nothing but an average that is suppose we have a random variable x okay if this x is a sample variable that is actual values actual values then we know x bar is given as summation x i by n right okay if this x were a random variable then instead of x bar we can we have to use mu and this mu we can write as 
instead of sigma and n what we will write expectation e so we write e of x expectation of x got it so for a random variable remember the mean is given in terms of expectation so whenever we say expectation of a random variable it means mean and the variance second moment or third moment everything we can express in terms of expectation so instead of this mu here we can use expectation of x usually that is the formula so we can here we can write expectation of x we write it like this so this is the second central moment okay now i told you about the variance because we have to see the covariance i will write it in terms of the sample one because you are familiar with that only suppose we have two variables x and y okay now remember i told you about the moment 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 means okay i shall start with that also suppose we have a variable x and its mean that is x bar okay if we sum this one this will be equal to zero right that we know already sum of the deviations sum of the deviations from the mean is equal to zero right so that is why actually we don't we cannot use this as a measure of dispersion measure of variation so we square this one and take the average okay now instead of this x minus x bar square what we do is suppose we have another variable y this x minus x bar is the actual moment okay i i x minus x bar is called a moment the deviation is called a moment so we take the moment for x that is x minus x bar and also the moment of y y minus y bar right that is we are multiplying the deviations between x and y then we sum it and then we take the average this is the covariance you are familiar with this from this covariance we get another measure okay what is the what is the what is the meaning of this covariance we have two variables x and y we say covariance what is the meaning of that how two variables ah so how two variables are related in their variation that is how one variable is related to another variable in their variation variation is given in terms of x minus x bar and y minus y bar that is why this is called a covariance so we can find out the relationship between two variables using the covariance but one pro major problem with this measure is it has it is it is it is it, it cannot be limited it it is a finite one of course but it value will value will increase it it may be minus a uh, infinity value or or plus infinity value so if we standardize this normalize this we get another measure and you are all familiar with that measure what is that from the covariance you get what correlation coefficient right so we we standardize this with the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y the product of these two we get the correlation coefficient okay so whenever we see covariance directly we can go to the correlation coefficient got the idea now you are familiar with the covariance so this covariance also matters along with the mean and variance these three characteristics are very important for every variable random variable or sample deterministic variable okay now let us come back to the ut
we have to consider the first row moment and the second central moment and uh, this covariance also is a kind of moment because it gives us the product of two moments x minus x bar and y minus y bar product of two moments therefore this is called a product moment this is called Pearson's product moment so the covariance is a product moment now when we analyze the assumptions on ut we have assumptions on these characteristics mean variance and covariance mainly there are other assumptions but we are concentrating only these three characteristics statistical characteristics now what is the mean of ut remember ut is a random variable therefore mean of ut is given in terms of expectation right so we can either say mean of ut or expectation of ut the first assumption is that ut has zero mean mean is zero mean is zero or expectation is zero this is the first assumption ols assumption second assumption is about the variance that is the sec second moment what of variance variance is represented as sigma u square that is variance of u variance of u this is assumed to be constant whatever be the t values whatever be the values of x t okay or y t this u t will have a constant variance its variance will not change over the time or this is not a function of time function of time means as time changes the value also changes we assume away that this is a constant one this is not a function of time now this means that we have a constant variance or we have same variance everywhere same variance and we use another term for this same variance you are known you know that homo scedasticity Scedasticity means variance, homo means same, same variance. So we have the assumption of homo scedasticity. If this assumption is violated, then we are getting something else. Ah, that is hetero scedasticity. Hetero scedasticity. Hetero means different. In that case, with the hetero scedasticity, sigma u square is not a constant so in that case we will write sigma t square sigma t square means what for every t we have a variance for the error t with every time period we have a separate variance so the variance is changing over the time sigma t square okay so we have zero mean then variance is constant then the third assumption is regarding the covariance. Now earlier we have seen covariance with respect to two variables say xt and yt. That is we have, I am writing in terms of expectation. Expectation, instead of expectation we can write sim, sigma by n, okay. But I am writing expectation because xt and yt are random variables so we can write xt minus expectation of xt into yt minus what expectation of yt mean of yt okay so this is the variance now if we have only one variable ut then how can we represent the variance 
Now consider this variable ut as the ut refers to the present period value of u, right? Last period, how do we represent? u t minus 1, u t minus 1. Then still one more period, previous u t minus 2, u t minus 3 and so on, right? So all these u t, u t minus 1, u t minus 2, all these are random variables. So we can have a variance of ut with ut minus 1, ut with ut minus 2, ut with ut minus 3 and so on. Similarly, we can have a vari covariance with ut minus 1 and ut minus 2 and so on. For every variable of these, we can have a covariance. In general, we can take ut and ut minus k where k is 1, 2, 3 and so on. If k equals 1, we get ut minus 1. k equals 2, we get ut minus 2 and so on. Got it? So, we can take these two variables and find the covariance. And this covariance is covariance of ut with respect to its own past value. ut minus k is the past value, right? Previous value. That is covariance of a variable with its own past value. Therefore, this covariance is called autocovariance. Autocovariance. This auto means covariance with respect to its own past value. So, we have autocovariance. Okay? And we can write the covariance covariance of ut and ut minus k. We can write it like this, covariance of ut and ut minus k. And this covariance is assumed to be 0 for the ut. Covariance is, autocovariance is 0. Now, from the variance, we have a measure standardized measure. What is that? From the covariance, we have a measure of relationship. What is that? Correlation coefficient. From the autocovariance also, we can have a measure of relationship between ut and ut minus k. What we will call that? Autocorrelation, right? If covariance is zero, then correlation is zero, right? If Autocovariance is 0, then autocorrelation will be 0. So, this assumption we can also write in terms of autocorrelation, telling that the autocorrelation is 0. There is no autocorrelation among the random error terms ut. Is it clear? These three assumptions are very important for the OLS estimation. And if these three assumptions are satisfied, then this error term ut is called a spherical error. Spherical error. Spherical error. So remember that name, spherical error. So what is a spherical error? It's an error term satisfying these three assumptions. What are these three assumptions? Zero mean constant variance, zero autocorrelation or zero autocovariance. These are the three assumptions. If these three assumptions are satisfied, the error term is called spherical error. In time series, a spherical error is the spherical error is called white noise. A spherical error is called white noise in time series. That is in financial econometrics. A spherical error is called white noise. Now, can you tell me what is a white noise? What is a white noise? White noise is a random error term with these three assumptions, ah, assumptions satisfied or with these three stat three stat 
statistical characteristics. These three characteristics, what are the three characteristics? Zero mean, constant variance, homoscedasticity and zero autocorrelation. Okay? So, such a random error term is called white noise. Is it clear? Okay. Now, I am not going into the details of this OLS, other details. We need only these three assumptions. Any doubt anywhere? Anybody? Aha. <laughs> what is the difference between correlation and covariance? Can you tell me? Ah, what is the what is the relationship? Oh, no, difference. Covariance and correlation. Ah, co movement. Yeah, co movement. Yeah. Yeah, it will give, see, for every measure there will be two, two properties. One is with respect to the sign, right? Sign and another is magnitude. So, for the covariance, we will get the sign and magnitude. Covariance may be positive or negative. Positive covariance means what? both x and y are moving together in the same direction, either upwards or both are moving downwards, both. Minus means they are in the opposite direction. So, the co-movement can be ascertained using the sign, but we also get a magnitude. The number may be between minus infinity less than covariance less than plus infinity there is no standardized value. So, that is not the, the problem with the correlation coefficient. When we standardize the covariance, that is covariance of x and y divided by standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y, we get the correlation coefficient between x and y, rx, y. We are standardizing. When we standardize like this, the correlation coefficient will lie between minus 1 less than or equal to r less than or equal to plus 1. Would it? This is the difference between covariance and the correlation. The same we have for the autocovariance and the autocorrelation. Ah. Correlation because you can say whether there is, you can find out whether there is perfect correlation or imperfect correlation. So, you have to use the correlation coefficient, not the covariance. Covariance will not give you any idea. For example, suppose you have a, you, for the covariance you will have, you will get 128 or sometimes 78 or sometimes 1347 and so on. So, what inference you will arrive at using these figures? We cannot say anything about the perfect or imperfect relationship. Perfect means either minus 1 or plus 1. Imperfect means 0 because r can be 0 also. It lies between minus 1 and plus 1. So, we use this one. Okay. So, we have seen a white noise, okay. Now, I will give you some uh, historical development of the time series econometrics. Time series econometrics started with uh, George Yule, George Utney Yule, 1926. 1927 also, okay, 26, 27, 
when Lord Yule, a British statistician, postulated that any time series can be represented as a function of its own past values. Any time series can be represented as a function of its own past values. Now, one more thing. What is this time series? You are already familiar with, uh, you know already what a random variable is, okay? All the population variables we consider random variables. Now, for example, we have yt as a random variable, yt minus 1 also a random variable, yt minus 2 and so on we have all these yt and its lagged values. When we collect all these random variables, random variables yt, yt minus 1, yt minus 2 and so on, finally what we will get? y2, y1, y0, right? The last one, y0, the, the, the start point. If we arrange these variables in order of time, y t, y t minus 1, y t minus 2, and, or y 0, y 1, y 2, and so on this way. If we arrange it in either ascending or descending order, like this, then we say that we have a random process, random process or stochastic process. Stochastic process. Stochastic means random, okay? Stochastic process. So what is a stochastic process? It's a collection of random variables arranged in order of time. Collection of random variables arranged this way, that is ascending order or descending order of time. Such a, pro, such a collection is called stochastic process and a time series is a stochastic process. Time series is a stochastic process. Okay? Such a time series can be represented as a function of its own past values. For example, yt can be represented as a function of its own past values by t minus 1, by t minus 2 and so on. That was the formulation by Yule. That is, according to him, a time series by t can be represented as a function of by t minus 1, by t minus 2, by t minus 3, by t minus 4. He considered only 4 lags. Okay. This by t minus 1 is called first lag. Okay. First lag. This is the second lag. Then third lag. Then fourth lag. We have lag for the previous values. Lag. We can also have another case lead. Lag is given in terms of by t minus 1 or t minus 2 and so on. Then what will be lead? We can write by t plus 1, by t plus 2 and so on. Those are called lead, okay? But we are considering only the lag, by t minus 1, by t minus 2 and so on. So you will set that any time series by t can be represented as a function of its own lagged values. So that if I write this by t as a regression equation, okay, we can write alpha plus phi y t minus 1 plus u t, say. That is by t is given as a function of its own past value. Here I am using only one lag. You will use the four lags. 
we can we can use multiple logs but let us start with only this one since we are using only one log okay and this is okay what were we that we know yt is given here as a regression on its own past value yt is a regression on its own past value now earlier i told you when we take the covariance of yt on its own past value we call it we call it auto covariance you remember auto covariance or when we take the correlation of yt with its own lagged value we we get auto correlation here yt is regressed on its own lagged value then what sort of a regression is this auto regression so this is called an auto regression and we write a r since we are using only one lag this is said to be auto regression of order 1 order represents the lag ar1 ar1 is auto regression of order 1 now if we are using two lags then what we will get yeah we get ar2 and we can use any lag say 51 by t minus 1 plus phi 2 yt minus 2 plus and so on plus phi p yt minus p plus ut so this can be represented as what do we call this ar p auto regression of order p this p refers to the lag the peak lag got it so any time series can be represented as a function of its own lagged values that is ar auto regression got it remember this is only one variable we are considering only one variable this is a univariate approach only one variable yt and its lagged values is it clear so we have the ar model given by given by yule now consider the ar1 that is yt is equal to alpha plus phi by t minus 1 plus phi by t minus 1 plus ut okay this is an ar1 and what is this ut error time has another name in time series i told you if the three assumptions are satisfied ah it's a white noise ut is a white noise the three assumptions are satisfied okay ut is a white noise but this white noise has another name also that is innovation what is innovation and why it is called an innovation what is the meaning of innovation aha innovation means what mm hmm that uh, i told you ut is a random variable so that random means it can come as a shock but that is not innovation innovation means what what is the meaning of innovation what is ah something novel something novel or new right new or news either new or okay i shall write it the other way news something new or news any news is new right that is why it is called a new called a news it brings us new information okay news bring us new information so any new information to this system is only from ut why 
that is why it is called an innovation any new information to this system yt is only from ut can you tell me why ah mm -hmm. ut brings something new only ut brings something new to yt is there any other variable in the system no other variable there is an explanatory variable what is that y t minus 1 and what is y t minus 1 it is the previous value and any previous value is already known to us there is nothing new what the idea y t minus 1 is already known to us there is nothing new anything new to the system comes only from ut therefore ut is called innovation it is also called news and it, it and any innovation or any news comes as a shock because ut is a random variable news comes as shock so it is called a random shock or simply as a shock So, ut is innovation, ok. Ah, now, one more thing. This phi, phi is the auto regression coefficient. It is also the auto correlation coefficient. Auto correlation coefficient. And this is so, this is auto regression coefficient is equal to auto correlation coefficient only in AR1 ok only in AR1 we have this auto regression coefficient is the auto correlation coefficient also not only that this yt equals alpha plus phi yt minus 1 plus ut in this system this phi is called the root of the process root of AR1 root of AR1 ok and why it is a root we have to go mathematically behind this we have what is called in mathematics we have a mathematical branch called difference equations difference equations we do not have enough time to go through the difference equations but this AR1 process is a first order difference equation, linear first order homogeneous, non homogeneous, oh in this case this is homogeneous, alpha is there, homogeneous difference equation, ok. Anyway, I am not going into the difference equations thing. In a difference equation, the this coefficient is the root of the AR1. So, hereafter we will consider this root, root of the auto regression, ok, root of auto, not only auto regression, but some other models also, root of the, that particular variable, that system variable. So, you will postulated that any time series can be represented as an AR process, ok. Now, in 1937, a Russian economist, Eugene Svrsky, have you heard of Svrsky? In 1937, Eugene Slutsky postulated, he did not know about Yule's AR process. Slutsky postulated that any time series can be represented, for example, by T in terms of a random variable, a random error term and its lagged values. Random error term, they, earlier we have used the UT, right? So, YT can be written as YT plus 
theta u t minus 1. Any random variable can be, any time series can be represented as a random error term and its lagged values. Here I have given only one lagged value. Such a process is called a moving average, moving average or MA. Here only one lag is used, therefore this is MA1 process, moving average of order 1. We can, we can increase the lag. If, if we use 2 lag then we will get MA2, 3 lags. MA3 and so on and generalizing we can write by t equals ut plus theta 1 ut minus 1 plus theta 2 ut minus 2 plus and so on plus theta q ut minus q. So this will be an MA process of order MA of order q MA q. So, any time series can be represented in terms of an error term, random error term and its lagged values. That is MA process, stochastic process, okay, MA stochastic process. So, according to Yule, we have autoregression. According to Sorsky, we have moving average, okay. Then after nearly 20 years, around 1956, a Swiss statistician Hermann Wold, Hermann Wold combined these two, AR and the MA process, and we have what is called ARMA process, autoregressive moving average process, combination of autoregression and moving average. So, if I write by t equals alpha plus phi y t minus 1 plus u t. What is this process? What is this process? Ah, this is an AR1, AR1. And if I write by t equals u t plus, oh, so not theta u t minus 1, what is this? This is an MA1 process, MA1 process. If we combine both, we will get y t equals alpha plus phi y t minus 1 plus u t plus theta u t minus 1. So, we are combining AR and MA and this is ARMA. What is the order? ARMA 1. 1, ARMA 1, 1, okay. So, we are combining AR and MA and we already know that the AR can have a, an order of P, MA can have an order of Q. So, combining this we can have ARMA PQ. Arma P Q. Arma P Q means what? A R of P and M A of Q. If I write Arma 1 0, what does it mean? Ah, A R of 1, there is no M A, right? Similarly, if I write Arma 0 and 1, this means MA1, there is no AR component, okay. So, we have the ARMA process.
anybody any doubts any doubts finally i will start asking questions <laughs> okay now let it let it be there we have the we have seen the arma model okay earlier i have told you for the univariate analysis we have arima right there is an i that is integrated now we are moving to that that what is that integration okay and for that purpose i will go to the fundamental concept in time series econometrics that is stationarity stationarity this is the fundamental concept in time series econometrics this is fundamental because we can have a valid regression with the time series variables only if that variables are stationary if the variables are non stationary then we cannot have a valid regression okay for example if when we write yt equals alpha plus beta xt plus ut okay in this alpha and beta these parameters are fixed coefficients they are fixed coefficients they are constant and constant coefficient models we can have only with stationary variables if we are using non stationary variables alpha and beta cannot be fixed or they cannot be constant and that is why we say in time series econometrics before going for any regression we have to see whether the variables are stationary or not okay now what is the what is a stationary variable how can we find out if it is stationary or not okay for a stationary variable suppose yt is a stationary variable for a stationary variable we consider the three moments what are the three moments the three statistical characteristics ah mean variance covariance okay we are considering only one variable therefore auto covariance right so for a stationary variable say we are writing yt is equal to in terms of the our phi y t minus 1 plus ut okay here there is no constant okay that is the intercept is not there but we can also include intercept by t equals alpha plus phi y t minus 1 plus ut we can have this th this two specifications one without the intercept and here with intercept okay two specifications now for this yt variable mean will be equal to zero if yt is stationary okay yt stationary mean will be equal to zero in this case mean will be equal to alpha divided by 1 minus phi that is alpha is a constant phi also is a constant therefore the mean is a constant okay either it will be zero or it will be a constant mean will be a constant and here this alpha divided by 1 minus phi we can define only if this phi is less than 1 okay otherwise we can also write phi is not 1 right if phi is equal to 1 what will happen ah then this quantity is not definable 
they cannot define this quantity, it is indeterminate. That is alpha divided by 0. We do not know what that quantity is, it is not determinate. So, we should have this condition, okay. Then variance, variance will be sigma u square and the sigma u square we know it is a constant. Variance of yt will be equal to the variance of the error frame sigma u square. Okay. And the uh, variance in this case, in this case also sigma u square which is a constant. Then we have covariance of yt and yt minus k. This is given as phi power k sigma u square. Oh, sorry, here we have sigma u square divided by 1 minus phi square, okay. I just missed that. So, the variance is given as sigma u square divided by 1 minus phi square and here also sigma u square divided by 1 minus phi square. In both the cases we have this condition that is phi is less than 1 and that condition is very important, okay. Now we can come to the covariance, covariance of yt and yt minus k. This is given as phi power k sigma u square divided by 1 minus phi square. The same we have here also. In both the cases we have the same. So in general we can see that for a stationary process mean is either 0 or a constant, variance is a constant. What about the covariance? Phi is a constant, k is the lag, lag can be k equals 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. And the sigma u square is constant, phi is constant. So the covariance changes only with the lag. Okay, there is no t in, in this framework. That is, covariance is not a function of time. So, with respect to the time, covariance is constant. Same is the case here also. So, in general we can say, yt is a stationary variable if the mean is constant, variance is constant and covariance also is constant. Good idea? So, if all the three characteristics are constant, then that variable is stationary variable. Is it clear? Okay. Now, I have a question. I told, I am just telling now that a white noise, you are familiar with the white noise, a white noise is a stationary process, but a stationary process need not be white noise. Why? Can you tell me why? What is a white noise? Can you tell me what is the what is the mean of a white noise? Zero. Is can it be a constant? No. What is the variance of a white noise? Constant. What is the covariance of a white noise? Zero. What idea? It is zero. It is it, here it is constant. So, the difference is in these two cases, 
good idea so a white noise can be a stationary process but a stationary process need not be white noise is it clear got it okay now behind all these three characteristics we have this condition that is phi is less than 1 it is not equal to 1 otherwise but usually we write this one phi less than 1 so if the what is the meaning of this two this two lines absolute value right plus or minus whatever be that we do not consider we consider only the magnitude phi less than 1 this is the condition and this condition defines a stationary variable got it so all these all these characteristics we are obtaining because of this condition therefore this condition defines a stationary variable like this if phi is less than 1 in an air one process then that yt is stationary process got it similarly here also if this phi is less than 1 then the process is stationary and we will have these characteristics constant characteristics now what is this phi i told you earlier in an ir1 process this phi is called root of the ir1 process that is root of the ir1 process is less than 1 or in general for every ar of any order an ar p process if the roots are less than 1 that process is a stationary process if the roots are less than 1 got the idea now if the root is equal to 1 what we will get that is phi becomes phi is equal to 1 plus or minus 1 phi is less than 1 so the root is equal to unit we have a unit root if the root is equal to 1 we have a unit root so this equation will become what yeah this equation will become non stationary that is we have yt is equal to y t minus 1 plus ut why i have written like this because phi is equal to one what it phi is equal to one so we can write yt equals by t minus 1 plus ut otherwise we can write yt is equal to alpha plus y t minus 1 plus ut with a constant here without constant with a constant and without constant we have a unit root for the ar1 what it we have a unit root now for the mean mean of this process is this process is equal to zero and in this case mean is equal to alpha t where t is time is it a constant no as time changes the mean also changes mean increases then variance is in this case sigma t square that is variance of u okay we can write u t square so t also is sorry sigma u square sigma u square t that is this we can we can write as sigma t square sigma square into t just like alpha into t so as time changes 
variance also changes. And here also it is sigma u square t. That is variance is equal to sigma t square. T break. Just one, one minute. Here we have y t minus k. And here also we have the same sigma u square t. Here also we have sigma u square t. So all the three characteristics except this one when there is no alpha. All the three characteristics are changing over the time. As time changes, the characteristics also change. That is the non-stationarity problem. That is when phi is equal to 1. Got it? Okay, now we are going for tea break. Five minutes. <laughs>